Today we're going to continue with activity 2.1 needing input with a focus on the photocell resistor. Now a photocell resistor is an analog electrical device, which basically means that it provides a variable reading or how much or how little light that it can detect. To identify the value of your photocell resistor, we're going to test it by using an analog value program that we created during the pressure sensor activity. We will be using an on a button press event handler. Within that event handler, we're going to be using a show number block. Now the number that we're going to be showing is the value of that given sensor. In our previous activity, we went ahead and used the on a button press to show the number of the pressure sensor, which we created as a variable. We're going to be just switching that variable by creating a new one called photocell. And then we're going to replace the pressure sensor with the photocell variable. This will give us the value of that photocell whenever the A button is pressed. This way we can go ahead and test our photocell in real time to find out how much light is within the room. Just like our flex sensor, our photocell is an external sensor that can be attached to our microbit using alligator wires. The device can also provide us with a variable reading on how much light it detects. To test the photocell, we're going to go ahead and complete the photocell project. For our photocell project, we're going to go ahead and look at using a single condition, and we're going to ask whether or not it is light or dark in the room. If it is dark in the room, we're just going to go ahead and show the letter D on our microbit LED screen. If it's light in the room, then we'll see an L. Now, something to keep in mind is that our photocell is an analog sensor and can detect the amount of light with using a variable range from zero, being the darkest, to 1023, where it would be the brightest. If the photocell has a value that is below 700, then we're going to be detecting darkness. Therefore, that's when we'll show the D on the microbit LED screen. Any value above 700 will represent the being light in the room, and we'll go ahead and show the L. Don't forget to add your button A press event handler in order to test the value of light within the room during real world testing. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would program our photocell. For our photocell project, we're looking at using a single condition here in order to detect the amount of light. Now for our photocell, we want our program to constantly check our value. So we're gonna stick with using a forever event handler. The next thing we need to do is connect our photocell to one of the pins. And based on our diagram here, we're gonna be going ahead and sticking with connecting our photocell to pin zero. Since this is an analog sensor, we're going to be using our analog read pin. Now we're going to go ahead and create a variable just like we've done before in order to set the pin to a name, which will be the photo cell. So we're going to go into our variable drawer here and we're going to make a new variable and we'll go ahead and call this photo cell. Once you create the new variable, we're going to need to go ahead and set that photo cell to zero. Now where we have the zero is where we want to connect that to one of the pins. In this case, we're gonna go into the advanced drawer, find pins, and we're gonna be looking at this analog read pin. You're gonna to wanna to check your flow chart to make sure which pin we are gonna be connecting the photo cell to. In this case, we're gonna stick with analog read pin zero. Now that we have a variable set to one of our pins, we're able to go ahead and set the logic behind this program. In this case, we have one condition, but two outcomes. So we're going to use an if then else statement. This will allow us to write a single condition, but still have two possible outcomes depending on the result. What we're looking at this doing is if that value is below 700, then we want to be able to show the D on the micro bit. So we'll go into our logic drawer and we're going to go ahead and find a comparison block of less than. And right now we have this if zero is less than zero. We're gonna replace the first zero with the photo cell. That's gonna state that if the photo cell is less than zero, we're gonna show the letter D on the microbit LED screen. Now we don't wanna use the value of zero. And in fact, it will never get below zero because the lowest it could go is zero. We wanna use the value of 700. So we're gonna replace that zero with 700 and here we now have our first condition that if the photo cell is less than 700, we'll see a D on the microbit LED screen, which we can already see in that emulator. Now the L statement is what happens if that value gets above 700. 
That's where we're gonna go back into that basic drawer and we're gonna display the letter L. Now what this is gonna state is, if that photo cell is less than 700, we'll see that D. But the second we go ahead and change that value and it gets greater than 700, now we're gonna go ahead and show the L. Later on, we're gonna connect an LED to this so that we can see a light actually turn on or off depending on the value of the light. Now, in order to check our value, we're gonna go ahead and use that input on a button press. And just like we did with our other sensors, we're just gonna go ahead and use our basic drawer and put a show number zero. And then we'll replace that zero with our variable photo cell. This way, no matter what our value is on the micro bit, we can go ahead and hit that A button. And during real time testing, we can see that that value is 425 or whatever it may be in that room. Now that you've gone ahead and set up your photo cell, it's now time to go ahead and build your program as well as try this on your micro bit.